And then the main event, Team McAfee, Undisputed Era. And they had a very good, a little bit too long match, as we noted. Pete Dunne and Kyle O'Reilly actually started as the first two guys, and they were awesome together. Yeah, those first five minutes were great. Yeah. Just fantastic. And then from that point, it was the basic war game psychology that always works. Heel in next, babyface, heel, babyface. And, of course, Pat McAfee is the final heel. Adam Cole is the final babyface. And from the time that everybody got into the ring, they went an extra 20 minutes, I believe. Of And they're all great, so like everything they did looked good. A lot of crazy spots in this match. We should note that there were injuries on this show. It Can- appears Candace LeRae might have a broken arm, maybe. Candace may have broken her arm. Io Shirai was mildly injured, but appeared to be fine after being squashed in a garbage can. There was actually a spot in the very first part of the women's match where the first two women in were Ember and Dakota, if I recall correctly. And Dakota goes for a kick... And she kicks Ember right in the head. Yep. And Ember just dropped like a like a ton of bricks. And the ref checks on her. And Dakota keeps looking at the side of the cage and ends up bringing Ember over. So I guess one of the refs or doctors can talk to Ember. Took Ember like a minute. And then finally she started to get her bearings back and she finished the match. But that was not good. And I think... Oh, and also uh, in this main event, uh, Bobby Fish got his elbow sliced open. Yeah. And it was bleeding all over the place. Um, somebody got their mouth busted open. Oh, it was, no, it was um, uh, Thatcher got his ear busted open. Thatcher got his ear busted open. His ear was bleeding a, all over the place. Yeah, yeah, which actually added to the visual, because kind of, kind of match they did that actually, like, it was like fortunate juice, so to speak, because it really, it really enhanced what they were doing, because they were doing a very... Um, um, you know, kind of like believable, real rough wrestling match, and then you see guys' ear all busted open, and it kind of fit within the match. Um, and in the who was was it? Um, God, uh, who got his mouth busted open? It was um, um, was it Oni Lorcan? Right? I don't even remember. I mean, unless yeah. it was on the finish. Yeah. It was on the finish. Okay, well, he got killed on the finish because Kyle O'Reilly put a chair on his face and then did a bombs-away knee drop off the ropes in the middle of the cage and just smashed his face, pins a guy, and so a big win for Kyle O'Reilly. So Finn Balor's coming back on Wednesday. Obviously, Kyle O'Reilly destroyed his jaw. Maybe that they're going to be doing a rematch on New Year's Evil or something. I mean, I mean, like, like the way the first match went... And, you know, the first match was never the plan. The, the, the problem is, okay, is is like the nature of the fact that Finn Balor got his jaw broken by Kyle O'Reilly would, you know, necessitate one of those things where we have this plan, but this happened. So logically, within the framework of wrestling, we should do Finn Balor against Kyle O'Reilly for revenge for the jaw. But they're also bringing Karrion Cross back, and Karrion Cross deserves a championship match because he never lost. So you got that too. So I would I would go in there with the the O'Reilly rematch, and then go with you know and Cross because Cross was their guy. You know what I mean? It's like it's like they were going to build this whole thing around Cross. So he's getting the belt. I'm almost sure. You know, I mean, because he was going to have a long run with it to begin with. So. Um, I think that they probably go right back to the, you know, that would be the original, go back to original plan, but, um, they might just go right to, uh, cross, but, um, I would, you know, and plus, um, you know, with Finn Balor and Kyle O'Reilly, you're pretty much guaranteed a great match. So that's always a good thing. And you can, you might as well do it. It's, it's like the storyline leads you to it. So just, just do it, you know, especially when you got like, you got weekly TV. So it's not like. It's not like you've got a situation where, well, we've only got like a show every, you know, whatever, every, you know, big, we only have this number of big shows. You know, this is one you can just go, eh, just put it on TV. I mean, you're, you're in a ratings war anyway, so just go with that. So that's what I would do. I would go in there, build it for a couple of weeks. I wouldn't do it like, yeah, January 6th would be a good date for it. Um, you could do it a week earlier than that, too. But if January 6th is the peak, I would go with Finn Balor and, and Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, for the for that match, yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, 
We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.